nestled on the northern bank of the majestic Potomac River, or as they say in parts of West Virginia, the Potomac River, a mere 20 miles upstream from the bustling heart of Washington, D.C., lies a hidden gem known as the Seneca Quarry Ruins. Veiled by a dense forest that has claimed it as its own, this once thriving quarry served as a vibrant hub where the rich, russet-hued sandstone was skillfully crafted and used in the construction of numerous iconic buildings that grace the capital of the United States of America. Today, it stands silently, easily overlooked by those leisurely strolling by or cycling along the neighboring Chesapeake and Ohio Canal. The storied origins of this quarry could be traced back to the year 1781, when the enterprising Robert Peter acquired the sprawling tract of land. Over the ensuing decades, the industrious Peter family carved out mines to unearth the coveted red sandstone and marble that was nestled near the banks of the Potomac River. However, it was the advent of the CNO Canal that truly cemented their fortunes. Some of the quarry's stone found its purpose in the very construction of the canal itself. The realization that this heavy yet resilient sandstone could be effortlessly transported downriver to the bustling market of Washington, D.C. ignited dreams of lucrative contracts. One such remarkable endeavor was the generous donation of the red rock that adorned the iconic Smithsonian Castle between the years 1847 and 1855. The Peter family's prosperity waned after the ravages of the Civil War. In 1866, the Seneca Sandstone Company acquired the quarry for a sum of $70,000. After a decade marred by mismanagement and financial woes, the company was compelled to declare bankruptcy in 1876. Ownership of the quarry changed hands twice more before its eventual closure in 1901. By this time, the once prized quality of the stone had deteriorated considerably, rendering the red sandstone a relic of the past, no longer in vogue. Throughout its illustrious history, the Seneca Quarry beckoned workers from across the Atlantic, luring skilled laborers from the shores of England, Wales, and Ireland. The quarry also played a role in the complex tapestry of labor in the United States. Yet, amidst the tranquility that envelopes these ruins, the echoes of the quarry's former laborers remain resolutely silent. Nature, too, has reclaimed this once bustling site. It's now surrounded by a colorful blanket of sycamores, poplars, and wild roses. Visitors who are brave enough to walk through the green woods can now see the impressive red sandstone walls of the old stone-cutting mill. These walls are a tribute to the craftsmen who use the quarry's energy. As you dig deeper, you'll find the carefully rebuilt Quarry Master's House, which stand as a reminder of the past, as well as the touching Quarry Cemetery, which honors the people whose hard work changed the course of history. These amazing ruins are now part of the well-known Chesapeake and Ohio Canal National Historical Park. They honor the history of the Seneca Quarry and invite anyone who visits to take a trip back in time. These are Interesting Things with J.C.